asking you these questions, but I'm doing it for a purpose. How did you find a, find a bus ride? Just be sincere. How did you find a bus ride? No problem. Is it really fine or American fine? Because <laughs> what Americans say, oh, it's okay. Nah, they didn't improve me, right? Oh, that's good. I like that. Um, how about our inability today to stop and eat lunch, sit down and eat lunch? Was that a much of a convenience or I mean, was it much of an inconvenience? Yes. I know it's much of a inconvenience. You would have loved to sit down and eat, some and eat, and eat something and drink, the, you know, drink some smoothie. Where's my small boy? <laughs> and, <laughs> Then he get annoyed, but you see now there's today there's no there's no smoothie, he's not saying anything. Uh the bus ride. Well I think how would you feel if we didn't have this bus and then we are all crowded in a very small bus? Sorry. Shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> you have to endure it. Yeah, you don't you, can you handle that? No. You can't handle that. No. My hand. <laughs> What if our, if our two, if we, Bomani and I were to force you from now oh, into that, we would have had a lot of people, rebellion, serious rebellion. Somebody trying to punch you in the face. So how could you do that? How would you do this to us, Bomani? How would you change our bag? Our bag? Yes. This part of the journey is uh, part of the beginning of uh, mostly one of the reasons why we're here. We've watched the first movie from about Jamaica, and we also have, we are just watching this film too. Uh, we think that what we are facing today in America is the worst, right? But. Some years ago, 300, 400 years ago, they said to this year is the 400 years of the first time the Penta Nina Santa Maria, step for, I mean, Dr. De Virginia, James and Virginia, were the first African slaves or enslaved people. I, was, I want to say enslaved people, no slaves. And uh, we're going to be stopping within the next 15 minutes to visit a graveside and a market, former slave market. I asked that question about the buses confirming how comfortability or otherwise of it as a result. See, my brother is sitting down and then has his back today. All of you see you sitting here sitting down comfortably. Have your back to an, 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 an backrest. And then you can say, okay, can you stop for us to get up and use water? What I wanted to know that 400, 450, 460, 500 years ago, some of our ancestors that found ourselves that were taken out of this country by force. They were coerced. Somebody was just going to the farm and he was seized. Some woman went down to the riverside to wash her linen or clothes and she was seized. A group of young men playing and then they came into the household with horses and nets. It was said that when you were running they used a net to strangle you, I mean to abstract you and take you away. And while they came down they did not have a truck, let alone calling it a bus. They came down here walking barefoot. Only God knows the distances, the number of steps that they took or they've walked. They didn't have any road like this. This road is, is bad, but they didn't have anything like this going through the Appian Way, meandering through the thorns. Whatever you were wearing, if thorns were picking your clothes, tearing your skin apart so you get done just because somebody wants you to go to work for a person in the Americas and other parts of the world.
this place we're going to is called Asene Manson, and it was a slave market. The largest slave market in the southern part of Ghana. Right from here, then you go, you were taken to the dungeons in Cape Coast, or the one in Almina. The history of slave trade as it came in, uh, the Portuguese went out into sea. Their main aim or primary objective was they wanted to find a new sea route to India. The reason was they saw that Arab traders went to peddle silk, the real silk, the one that you get from the, uh, from the worms. And they were tracing the source of these. Their second aim was the thing they were Christians. They wanted to spread Christianity. Off the coast of Senegal, Captain Gunkavs and his assistant were navigating a river by boat and they came into contact with Africans. As vulnerable as the Africans were, these people were taken to Portugal. And the king of Portugal wanted them to be trained as priests or catechists. So that when they come bring them back to Af Africa, they will help in the dissemination of the gospel. However, in the seminary, they were encouraged to work in the mines and the plantation. And that was where the Africans worked and worked. If you see us working in the field, you would think these are no human beings, especially when you go to the northern part of the country. You work, you go to farm, and you work for like six hours. Of the eight hours that you do, six hours you work, the two hours just a little bit of rest and also to eat. So when Christopher Columbus, the guy who went to meet with the um, Americans and refer to them as people he had discovered passed through Ghana on his sojourn to the Americas. He spent some few days in the Elmina Castle. So when they finally found mines and plantations in the Americas, they engaged the Native Americans and the Mexicans. But these people will work at specific hours. They will not go beyond that. If you want them to work beyond that, you have to pay overtime. So they had a challenge with labor. And a priest who was in the seminary where those 10 people had been taken advised them that the Portuguese came into contact with some people who work and work and work without tired. So I believe Christopher Columbus was sent through the sojourn to Ghana to sign the contract of supply of this cheap, supposedly cheap labor. So 1471, the Portuguese got to Elmina, traded with the people for 11 years. 1482, they came with a request to build the Elmina Castle. And that was interesting. The king of Elmina said, friends that meet occasionally remain better friends than when they become neighbors. He rejected the, odd, the idea. But the white man went back and bribed his council. <laughs> and the council, divided the rules started there. The council pursued the king and then he offered them the land. So with the land, when they built the castle, yeah, you know, as you must why. Now, they sold gun, gunpowder, rum, to communities. Communities that had access to these became stronger, and therefore took arms against one another, and captured their father brothers, fellow brothers, people you would have called today as prisoners of war, and sold them out into slavery. So that's why I said I did not understand why the, I mean, the, we should, uh, the Somali tutorial was on it. Perhaps I need to read further.
about him because Samoro Ture was from Guinea and he was a slave raider. He fought until he met another slave raider from the eastern part, from Mali area. They met together and raided several communities and villages in this part of the country. That guy was also called Babatu. Babatu. Samara Ture and Babatu teamed up and raided West African communities. I said, one thing again. So, I didn't understand why. So, for this market we're going to, where we're stopping now, it's very important, it's very solemn. Uh, that's why I started by comparing. Imagine if we were to come down here walking, I don't think we'd have been able to make, make a more, more than five miles, more than 10 miles of walk. And we would have been broken down, hit our feet and then you have blood oozing. So, we will stop and see the graves of two ancestors, Samuel Carson from New York, Wall Street, New York, when they were tearing apart a black cemetery. Mm -hmm. And a lady called Madame Crystal from Jamaica, that's the only name. Because the coastline of Ghana is about 550 kilometers from east to west or west to east. And within this coastline, there were about 50 forts and castles mm. that were built. Wow. All of these castles and forts, it is only one that we know of that was built for military purpose. All the others were built as holding cells for enslaved Africans. So it means that there's a lot of Africans that were taken is enslaved people that were taken from Ghana than any other country. Gori Island is a small place, but Ghana you had dungeons or castles that would hold about a thousand enslaved Africans at a time. And the longest time they wait in the dungeons was three months. So if we see every three months in a year, it means that 4,000 are taken from one dungeon alone, the Rimina dungeon alone, or Kipu's dungeon alone, in every year. For how, many, for how many years? Right about 1521, thereof, to about the official 191807 by the British and 1814 by the Dutch. But it didn't stop. We had now what is called what was called the illegal slave trade, and the illegal slave trade period was the one that even dealt the much blow. Now in this market, because they were just about to transfer the enslaved people to other people that came to acquire them, then they started making them look good. Not for their I know, not for their welfare, but it was for them to fetch. If you have a cow that is lean, and I have a cow that is fat, and we go to market to go and sell, I'll fetch my own market, or mine will be more attractive than yours. So here, apart from one of the things they did was, they took the enslaved people down about five minutes walk from the market area, go down and wash them. After washing them, they smear them with palm kernel oil and they look shiny. It wasn't for the welfare. It was a marketing strategy that they used. So, in 1998, you know we have, we celebrate emancipation and then Juneteenth, some of those our 
head of state was invited. Then after that, some of the brothers and sisters, America, African American of today's activists, passive activists, advice and the gray and the remains of these two ancestors were brought here on the 20, 31st of July 1998. They came through the Cape Coast Dungeons. The Cape Coast Dungeons were called the doors of no return. Once you walk out of this door, you do not return to Africa. So they came back symbolically through those doors. And then a ceremony was held and the first of August, 1988, they were brought back here. There's a park right across the road, another ceremony, and then they were re-interred here. Symbolically, the African brother, when I say brother, I mean male and female that was taken away has returned because it takes a male and a female to produce. So symbolically, and why Ghana? Ghana because if you fit with it, so if you hit your foot and you fall, when you wake up, don't look at where you fall. That's not a fault. It's a point. At what you felt. So Ghana was where most Africans hit their foot. I'm not saying that they were all kept from Ghana, but that was Ghana was where they missed the step. And when you miss the step, you fall somewhere else. So if you get up, you are totally retracing what happened to you, go look for where you miss your step. So that was the reason why these enslaved Africans were brought back here for reinterment. And this year is a big year, it's a whole year celebration, the year of return. So on the 1st of August this year, it's going to be very, very tight and busy right here. So let's come down for a tour of the, the enslaved park, the market, and then the river. Okay, so take care.